This is ABC 7 News at 6. Good evening, everyone, and thank you for joining us. I'm Peter Dubois. And I'm Beth Jones. First tonight, Bangor Fire Department responded to a serious call at 35 Valley View Lane this morning. Our Matthew Jaroncic has more. Without a doubt uh, that there's probably five people who are alive today because of the uh, smoke detectors. A fast moving fire in this apartment complex put fire crews on high alert as soon as they rolled out of the station. The call came in uh, shortly after five this morning. Uh, the initial call was that there were people trapped in the building. Uh, station six was able to see the heavy smoke as soon as they opened the doors at the fire station, which is less than a mile away. The cause of the fire is currently under investigation, but Assistant Chief Hodge tells us that it was likely an accident. Officials say no one was injured upon escaping the building. However, three residents were transported to a nearby hospital for minimal smoke inhalation. Residents living nearby shared with us their encounters of the fire. About five o'clock, a couple of minutes after, and hear some popping outside. Thought it was maybe the neighbor dragging the trash can out, but then I hear another pop. So I opened up my curtain. I'm right literally bedroom faces that apartment, and it was engulfed in flames. I looked over and I saw that whole house over there in flames, shooting higher than the roof. And then um, that, that's the police arrived and just evacuated our building because the wind direction was right at our building. The Red Cross was on the scene checking in on those affected by the fire. Assistant Chief Hodge tells us that they plan on living with relatives in the nearby area. The apartment has been deemed a total loss and will continue to be investigated by the fire marshal's office. In Bangor, Matthew Jaroncic reporting for ABC 7 and Fox 22 News. The state police are investigating a deadly crash in Hodgden. They say 49-year-old Timothy Crowley of Cary Plantation was traveling south on Route 1 when he lost control around a curve. His Ford Explorer ended up going into the right ditch where the vehicle rolled over and he was ejected. Crowley was pronounced dead at the scene. It's still unclear what caused him to lose control. A crash reconstruction expert was called to the scene to help look for those answers. Hamden Public Safety responded to the scene of a rollover crash near 778 Kennebec Road in Hamden. Hamden Police Investigator Bill Miller says a car hit a telephone pole and rolled over. The driver was found conscious and trapped inside the car. First responders were able to extract the driver from the vehicle and they were able and they transported him to or them to a local hospital with serious injuries. A section of the road remains closed while Versant Power works to repair the hanging wires. The cause of the crash is currently under investigation. Well, those who enjoy kicking up a little dust on four wheels will have to wait a bit longer to hit Maine's trails. Our David Ledford explains. There has been major damage. There are major washouts. The Maine Bureau of Parks and Lands issued a notice this week that all ATV trails in the state will remain closed through at least Memorial Day weekend. The announcement comes after torrential rain and flooding left many trails impassable. Officials say this has compounded the damage caused by fallen trees and the spring thaw. Daryl Friedman with ATV Maine says the delay is more than disappointing because for riders, hitting the trails isn't just a hobby, it's a way of life. The inconvenience factor is there. People use their machines for work as well as play. There's a lot of people that have farms and other property. They'll use it around their own property to get work done, and then they'll go play. The trails normally open around May 15th, after the mud season. ATV club members say that if anyone is eager to ride, they should roll up their sleeves and pitch in to help clear the trails. If you're an ATV rider and you have not joined a club, please join a club. It's people like us. We're retired. We're out there working with chainsaws and, and things. We... We need help. Friedman reminds riders that the delay is intended to keep everyone safe. Water holes, you don't know how deep the water hole is. Um, you're going to also, some of the landowners still have gates up. Some of the landowners don't use gates, they use cables. Those are still up. You're, if you're not going to see them until it's too late and then you're going to run into it and you're going to damage your machine, you can get hurt yourself. In Ellsworth, David Ledford, ABC 7 and Fox 22 News. Well, nevertheless, today was certainly a great day to be outdoors in some way, shape, or form if you were able just picture perfect out there today. It really was. Yeah, not too warm, but that sun was out there. It felt it great. And yeah. Uh, yeah, like you said, just couldn't ask for a better day. All righty. Well, let's see what else is coming our way with the first check of the forecast.
Hey, Beth and Peter, happy Friday. We made it. Your first weather is brought to you by Priority Auto Body, 26 Summer Streets in Dover Foxcroft. Let's talk about the temperature change. This is the map compared to this time yesterday, how much warmer it is, about 12 degrees warmer, and that's putting our high temperatures today back up in the 60s. We earned it, but hold on. Uh, we're not going to stop here. Warmer temperatures are on the way back this weekend. Tomorrow and Sunday will likely feature temperatures in the 70s with plenty of sun sunshine finally right out there right now uh, there are some clouds across the area not a big deal at all these will fizzle away tonight and tomorrow we are left with lots of sunshine for tomorrow and sunday and probably for monday as well as a dry stretch unfolds for us so our forecast end tonight though is probably cloudy skies and low temperatures in the 40s your full forecast is coming up beth and peter all right looking pretty good yeah, excited for excited for the weekend. That is for sure. Me too. Well, coming up on ABC 7 News at 6, we'll have a follow up to a report we aired last week about proposals to de decriminalize drugs in Maine. Last week, we spoke to Brewer City officials who came out strongly against the idea of decriminalization. And now we will hear from lawmakers on both sides of the aisle. That story coming up. May is for moms, and this Mother's Day, our local mom-owned businesses have teamed up to celebrate you with this amazing giveaway. Enter to win a luxurious spa service at Marilyn Monroe Spas, free laundry service from the Laundry Basket, a delicious dessert at Happy Endings Dessert and Martini Bar, a month-long membership to Evolve Fitness, and $100 towards any IV vitamin infusion or weight loss service at Riverlight Restorative Health. To enter, visit our Facebook pages, scan the QR code, or stop by any of our locations. Happy Mother's Day from us to you. The lives we lead, the journey that defines us, the dedication, passion, and teamwork in everything we do, driven by the things we love. From the visions that lead us, the feelings that inspire us, to the roads that bring us together, Coastal Auto Parts, 29 locations in Maine, will get you to the moments that matter most. Get what you need to keep you firing on all cylinders when you sign up for Napa Rewards. Coastal Auto Parts is owned and operated by a Maine family that cares. It's time for the ultimate shopping experience. Harvey RV and Marine's 22nd annual open house. This Thursday, May 4th through Saturday, May 6th. Unbeatable deals on over six acres of RVs and boats, including the new lineup of Scarab and Manitou boats. Knowledgeable manufacturer reps will be on hand, and mainly Pastures Food Truck will be there Friday and Saturday. Daily door prizes, special rate financing, plus nearly all parts are 20% off. It's the biggest sales event of the year. Harvey the RV and Marines annual open house, Outer Broadway, Bangor. You're watching ABC7 Bangor. Welcome back. Last week, we told you about the city of Brewer sounding the alarm and taking a firm stance against proposed, me proposed measures that seek to decriminalize user amounts of drugs. Tonight, we hear from lawmakers on both sides of the issue who are sounding their own alarm, saying they can't wait any longer to address the growing drug crisis in Maine. My own cousin died in 2021 of a fatal overdose. That one death is unacceptable to me. Like many Mainers, the horrors of drug addiction have also personally impacted lawmakers. Representative Lydia Kraft's own connection to the issue, along with her work as a licensed clinical social worker, have driven her to draft what she calls a public health response to substance use disorder. She says the state is woefully ill-equipped to deal with the rising need for treatment and recovery services. 
So we have 16 counties in our state, and very few of those are currently served by detox and SUD treatment services. Mm -hmm. And this bill would establish a comprehensive system of 24-hour care, receiving centers, to when folks are ready and asking for treatment, their first step in recovery is getting face-to-face -face contact in a receiving center, and that's what this public health bill will do. The bill's language is still being finalized, but what it also does is decriminalize possession of user amounts of illicit drugs, a controversial approach that takes law enforcement out of the equation. It's certainly well documented that drug addiction leads to crime and can trigger crime and that other community members can be harmed by crimes related to drug, the drug addiction of others. Do you feel like there's any room for law enforcement or do you, are you really taking an approach of law enforcement needs to not be part of this conversation anymore? It's really important that folks who are struggling with a disease have the interventions that are proven and research-based, which we know substance use treatment is. Mm -hmm. This bill does nothing to talk about any of the other criminal charges around trafficking and furnishing. This is looking at incarceration hasn't worked. We cannot arrest our way out of this epidemic. And in order to do this, we have to try something different. Republican Senator Brad Farron is also grappling with loss due to addiction. One of the 760 16 Mainers lost last year to fatal drug overdoses was his beloved daughter, Haley. Haley Bug, that's what we call her. that's sea turtles. She, she loves sea turtles and um, loved to read, loved the Red Sox, just the uh, ray of sunshine. Farron says he and other Republicans are working on a multi prong approach to combating addiction. It too is still in the works, but he says it includes boosting education and increased services for treatment and recovery. It's got to be the three-prong approach. No one's got the smoking bullet. And, and, and that's where I talk about coming out of your comfort zone. But it does not eliminate law enforcement or decriminalize user possession of drugs. That's, that's a bridge way too far and decriminalizing it, I, I, I can't get to it. I'd rather be able to visit Haley in jail than a grave site. Representative Laura Supica is co-sponsoring one of the bills that seeks to facilitate safe consumption sites where addicts could consume drugs under supervision. I think it comes down to uh, what harm reduction is. And uh, you can't uh, help a person recover. You can't uh, help a person in addiction when they're dead. And so... Um, you really have to meet people where they're at. However, Supica doesn't completely rule out the validity of law enforcement's role and recognizes that what may be a solution for some may not work for others. For some people, when they are arrested and they enter into the court system, um, you know, and they get into drug court, uh, that system has worked well for them and they've been able to enter into recovery that way. But that that is not true for a lot of other people, you know, so we need different ways to address the issue. What's clear is that there is crucial common ground, saving lives. Right, we've got to keep people alive and we have to help them when they are asking for it. If we're going to make a difference, people have got to step outside of their comfort zones and we got to have discussions. And certainly a conversation that we are going to continue to follow, including the evolution of those bills in question. Absolutely. All right, well, still to come on ABC 7 News at 6, more than 100 nurses were welcomed into the profession and during a pinning ceremony in Hus at Husson today. Our A.J. Douglas talked to graduates about their opportunities ahead of them. And in sports, Hamden Academy Baseball is one of the top teams in their section. How their youthful yet experienced squad is proving their worth this year. That story coming up. Paramount Paving, Maine's go-to for all your paving and seal coating. Paramount Paving offers commercial and residential paving and seal coating services throughout eastern and central Maine. Give us a call for a free estimate today. Paramount Paving, when it comes to paving, we are Paramount. What's not to like about Maine? It's nice to just pick a road and see where it goes. When you go on a motorcycle ride and you wake up in a helicopter, you know it's not a good day. I broke this arm, this shoulder was shattered, this wrist was broken, I had a concussion. Whether it's your fault or someone else's fault, the only thing you have working for you at that moment is what you have on. If I didn't have all my gear on, I wouldn't be sitting here. There's no way.
Shop at Label Shopper for the latest designer fashions, all at 30 to 70% less than department stores. With prices this low and styles for everyone, you can get more of the brands you love. Label Shopper. Great clothes, great prices. Planning to dig in your yard with power tools? Call DigSafe first. Call 811 at least three business days before you dig. Utility crews will come out and mark where your gas, power, and cable lines are buried. Keep yourself and your neighborhood safe. It's the law. Upgrade your outdoor living space with TimberTech Decking and Railing by Azac. The low-maintenance decking with the look of natural wood. TimberTech is everything wood should be. TimberTech Railings provide safety while adding a beautiful finish. Your Hammond sales rep will help you with your selections and design planning. And Hammond delivers from 22 locations across Maine and New Hampshire. For the look of real wood that lasts a lifetime, choose TimberTech by Azac from Hammond Lumber Company, your building project partner. Paramount Paving, Maine's go-to for all your paving and seal coating. Paramount Paving offers commercial and residential paving and seal coating services throughout eastern and central Maine. Give us a call for a free estimate today. Paramount Paving, when it comes to paving, we are Paramount. Tonight's sports is brought to you by Taylor Events and Equipment Rental, 1179 Hammond Street in Bangor. Hey everybody, Ryan Sudall here. Thank you so much for joining us. Let's start with some high school baseball. Hamden Academy is quite the young team this year with 10 sophomores, but the winning experience they already have is paying off early. We're in such a good place. I know we're only just going to get so much better and our younger guys are just going to continue to step up. Hamden Academy baseball boasts a squad with a ton of youth, a towering ceiling, and already some championship pedigree. I think our future is really bright. We got a lot of sophomores, a lot of freshmen. Our junior legion team last year won the state championship, and that's the team that's going to be playing here for the next couple of years. Having those younger players that already proved they can win is a huge boost to the Broncos. It's important to have a little background. It's important to have a little confidence when you're playing, and I think that's what a lot of our guys have brought. Confidence is key, really, and a lot of these guys already have it. And that confidence has grown further as the Broncos are number three in A North. Why? They have ball players, not just kids who play ball. We got kids working on their swings and lifting to improve themselves as athletes. They understand the game better. They're students of the game. They have passion for the game. It's a big shift from our earlier years. This year it's changed. We have a lot better mindsets. I can tell with these guys, they, just, they really want to work and get better. A majority of the players also play multiple sports. Now, that's normally encouraged for fitness, but Coach John Perry sees it differently. But I think you're going to get the same experience standing at the foul line, shooting a one-on-one -on -one as you are, three, two count and bases loaded. I think that's the same as an athletic experience. That also allows players to gain a high compete level altogether, which the team is putting to good use after dropping two tough games in a row. There's definitely a fire after a team like us loses because all of us are super competitive. And so I think it brings a a sense of urgency and a sense of like, you guys can beat us, but the next opponent's not gonna beat us. And with that mindset and the skills they're developing, the Broncos see gold in the future, and maybe even the near future. I think we have uh, every tool, and I think we have every ability to bring uh, another champion, state championship back to Hamden. Okay, now let's go to the beautiful new softball diamond up at UMaine. Black Bears softball kicked off their final series of the regular season against Bryant on Friday with a doubleheader. Let's check out game one. Bottom two, Black Bears up two to nothing. Kylie Kenny's pitch is off. Grace McGoldrick steals second. That is her 31st stolen base of the year. A new Black Bears single season record. Congrats to her. Same inning. Jasmine Gray at the dish. She chops this one through the middle. Krista Francia comes in to score. McGoldrick as well. 4-0 Black Bears. Top four now. Same score. Bryant's Abby Trimble changes that. A deep shot into left field. That clears the wall. A two-run homer to make it 4-2. Top six now, Courtney Palantonio up for the Bulldogs. She nails a base hit into right field. Alexis Clancy and Hannah Cochran score to tie the game at four. Bulldogs go on to win game one, five to four. And we'll have highlights from game two as well as the main baseball game against UMBC later on tonight in the 11 o'clock news on ABC7. Okay, that's all the time we have for sports. Here's Jeff Weller with your full five-day forecast.
All right, Ryan, thank you. Your full weather is brought by Barney Ford, the nice car and truck people. And let's talk about temperatures today. Look at this back in the 60s. Remember yesterday, even some 40s on the map, not so much across our area today. And tomorrow is going to be even warmer. We're talking 70s tomorrow and also for Sunday. In fact, we're in the teens warmer now compared to this time yesterday. And we'll likely do it again for tomorrow. So overall, a nice warming trend is now kicked in for our region. In fact, high temperatures tomorrow looking to hit maybe upper 60s. There could be a couple low 70s in there tomorrow. That's going to feel really nice across our region. For today, though, we had some cloud cover, some low clouds in there early, followed by some high clouds through the afternoon. The clouds will begin to fizzle away tonight. It'll likely take it all night to do so. Then, then tomorrow, we'll be left with lots of sunshine tomorrow and also for Sunday and Monday, as we are now unfolding a long dry stretch across our region. Out there currently, though, there are some clouds out there. Again, not a big deal. No precipitation for us tonight or over the weekend. Uh, there is lots going on to the west of us, though. There are several systems out here. One, two, three. Uh, they are likely going to leave us alone, though, for several days, as we will likely stay dry at least through Monday and maybe Tuesday of next week. Let's walk you through it. So tonight, partly cloudy skies for a while this evening, and then skies will begin to clear. And then tomorrow morning, we're talking about clear skies, lots of sunshine tomorrow. Uh, don't don't forget your sunglasses tomorrow and then also for Sunday as well. Just a great weekend unfolding for us with temperatures in the 70s. We have not done that for a while, so lots of outdoor activities, of course, this weekend. If you're putting the boat in, whatever, yard work too. And then probably some more cloud cover across our area on Sunday evening. But again, until then, we have a nice weekend unfolding with lots of sunshine across our region for tomorrow. The wind did get a little squirrely today. We had winds out of the north around 10 to 15 miles per hour, ushering in some refreshing air across our area, right? Uh, but that did give us a small craft advisory earlier. But now, this is a coastal advisory. This is your tax dollars or weather service saying, hey, with these warmer temperatures tomorrow and Sunday, if you're heading into the water, that can be misleading with water temperatures still in the 40s. That can give you hypothermia very quickly. So here is your caution message with that advisory across our region for tomorrow. Our forecast so for tonight, though, we're talking about partly cloudy skies, so mostly clear skies late. Look for low temperatures down near 42 and a northwest breeze around five for tomorrow. Okay, so mostly sunny, breezy and warmer. I went with 72. A couple of you could get stuck in the upper 60s tomorrow, but who cares? It's gonna be nice, right? Northwest breeze around 10 with plenty of sunshine. And then looking ahead, your five day forecast will do it all over again Sunday, although probably increasing clouds Sunday evening and then a bit cooler for us Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday with high temperatures back in the 60s. Beth and Peter. Wow. Yes, please. Yeah, seriously. I mean, yeah. 70s, That maybe that's even a little warm for us right now, but that's okay because we're going to get those 60s. <laughs> yeah, we're all going to be sweating. <laughs> Afterwards, it's going to be great. 73 degrees, we're going to be dying. Seriously, all but right. hey, very happy to have them. Well, still more to come. Stay with us. Allow us to reintroduce the right amount of spicy. Lightly breaded and spicy tempura made with a blend of aged cayenne. If you're meeting for the first time, lucky you. Spicy Chicken McNuggets, they're back. For a limited time, enjoy Spicy Chicken McNuggets or get a spicy McCrispy sandwich. Plus, you can add any size Dr. Pepper for even more refreshment. Ba -da -ba -ba -ba. Mossy Ledge Spirits is a true hidden gem in Aetna. Located just three miles off I-95, exit 167, we are home to tastings, tours, cocktails, to-go drinks, bottles, live music, minis, and priceless memories. You're sure to fall in love with our handcrafted, unique, and deliciously clean-tasting spirits and feel right at home in our family-friendly environment. Mossy's Mobile Spirits is offering mobile bar service for weddings and large events. So enjoy some pizza and raise a glass here at Mossy Ledge Spirits. 
Did you know that an alpaca item is the most wish-listed gift idea? Stop searching for that perfect gift and start shopping for it at the Blue Alpaca in Belfast. It doesn't matter who's on your gift list. The Blue Alpaca has something for everyone with an incredible selection of alpaca socks, hats, sweaters, even stuffed animals and more. Shop in-store or online and take advantage of their free nationwide shipping. Too much to choose from? Don't worry. The Blue Alpaca also offers gift cards. The Blue Alpaca. Feel the difference. Bangor Floral is your perfect destination this Mother's Day. Since 1925, Bangor Floral has been a premier provider of beautiful floral arrangements and thoughtful Mother's Day gifts for almost 100 years. Featuring new colorful blooms, blossoming plants, and gift baskets that have warmed hearts for generations. We also strongly support the Buy Local movement by purchasing directly from local farms and suppliers. Bangor Floral, 332 Harlow Street. Experience a flower shop like no other this Mother's Day. Cool nights start with Ashley this summer with Tempur-Pedic mattresses starting at $37 per month and 0% interest for 60 months. Visit the mattress gallery at your local Ashley store to explore our wide selection of mattresses from all the top brands. Only at Ashley. Tonight, go behind the scenes of the historic crowning of a king. Plus, after another bank shows a sign of weakness, big or small, how can we tell if our money is safe? More Americans turn to the most watched program on television. World News Tonight with David Muir. Welcome back. More than 100 graduating nurses were welcomed into the profession during Husson University's pinning ceremony. A.J. Douglas talked to a representative from a local hospital to learn about the vast opportunities available to the new nurses. Undergraduate and master's students lined up for the annual pinning ceremony, which showcased academic excellence for newly practicing nurses and advanced practicing nurses. It means a lot. It's, I mean, four years of work, four years of dedication, sweat, tears, quite literally. According to the American Association of Colleges of Nursing, the ongoing shortage of nurses will continue as members of the baby boomer generation phase out of the industry. Chief Nurse Administrator Valerie Sada says she's proud that Hudson University's graduating nurses can contribute to the resolution. Today's need for nurses is, is crucial to the success of the healthcare system across Across the United States. We have students going from as far away as the Midwest uh, and California even. We have students going to Florida. We have many, many students staying in the great state of Maine. Many employers are already recruiting the recent grads. Northern Light Eastern Maine Medical Center is currently offering a sign-on bonus of $5,000 after taxes for graduates who sign on for one year at the Bangor Medical Center. Being a nurse is uh, both a pri privilege and a, and a really very difficult job to be able to uh, offer the highest level of support for people just starting um, in the profession. Both Sada and Gerza expressed that the ceremony feels bittersweet. People have said they're very excited but also been very tearful because it's an end of a journey. It is the end but also new doors open. In Bangor, AJ Douglas for ABC 7 and Fox 22 News. The main central institute in Pittsfield celebrated the renovation of one of the historic buildings on campus. Timothy Archibald says Founders Hall is known as a core campus building, but the structure has been in need of repairs for the past two decades. Archibald is a proud 1984 graduate and architect for the $7 million project. The list of repairs included new roofing, renovating classrooms, and ensuring the building is handicapped accessible. Kids came in to classrooms starting uh, early January 2023 and uh, just a, a great kind of breath of fresh air and energy from uh, all the kids and faculty and staff. He thanks the generosity of an anonymous donor for the funds to complete the project along with donations from alumni and community members. Finally tonight, if you're looking for a fun way to spend the rest of your Cinco de Mayo holiday, be sure to check out Downtown Bangor's First Friday. Tonight's events include viewings of abstract acrylic landscape by Shannon Westfall inside the Rock and Art Shop, plus comedians Mary Mack and Tim Harmston making the, taking the stage at the Bangor Arts Exchange. There will also be a competition to determine the best margarita in downtown Bangor, with the winning bar or restaurant receiving a special award, plus bragging rights, of course, for the whole year. 
Downtown Bangor Partnerships Executive Director Betsy Lundy says the event is a great way for people to connect. Everybody loves an opportunity to get out and interact with uh, with people. You bump into people that you haven't seen in a while. You bump into people you've never met before. Um, it has a real neighborhood vibe to it. The first Fridays will continue to take place on the first Friday of every month all the way through October with a new theme each Friday. Most of the events will take place between 4 and 8 p.m. Upcoming themes for the next few months include equality and pride, kickoff to summer and wild Maine blueberry. Be sure to head to downtownbangor.com for a full list of activities. And I think today serves as a great day to just kick off this season mm -hmm. of, of first Friday events. Pretty interested in, in that uh, margarita competition to see who comes out on top. <laughs> right. hey. I think you just won a margarita. Yeah, I kind of do. Yeah, right it's right it's all right. I'm not, I'm, I'm not hating on you for it. <laughs> I'm with okay. you, bud. Oh, my goodness. It's a good day for it. It is, Beautiful right? Weather. Beautiful weather. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Anything better than some alfresco dining Seriously. on a day like today? Yeah, Fantastic. and just great to get foot traffic out and about in Bangor. Mm -hmm. and just, you know, it's, it's that time of year again where it just starts to feel more alive. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Margaritas don't hurt. Mm -hmm. All right, well, that's going to do it for us, folks, from everybody here at ABC7. Have a great rest of your night. Good night, everyone.